ఓం నమో శ్రీ రాఘవేంద్ర అయిన మహ వెల్కమ్ టు మై యూట్యూబ్ ఛానల్ గురు రాఘవేంద్ర శ్రీ సదాశివ బ్రహ్మేంద్ర వస జీవన్ ముక్త ఆ యోగి హూ లెడ్ అన్ ఎగ్జాంపలరీ లైఫ్ అరౌండ్ త్రీ హండ్రెడ్ ఇయర్స్ బ్యాక్ శ్రీ సదాశివ బ్రహ్మేంద్ర వాజ్ బాన్ టు అ తెలుగు బ్రాహ్మిన్ శ్రీ సోమనాథ యోగి అండ్ శ్రీమతి పార్వతీదేవి ఇన్ మధురై బై ద గ్రేస్ ఆఫ్ లార్డ్ రామనాథ స్వామి అట్ రామేశ్వరం హెన్స్ వాస్ నేమ్డ్ శ్రీ శివరామకృష్ణన్ ఈ గేండ్ మాస్టర్ ఈ ఓవర్ వేదాస్ అట్ అ వెరీ ఎంగేజ్ ఈస్ మ్యారేజ్ టు ప్లేస్ వెన్ ఈ వాస్ ట్వెల్వ్ ఇయర్స్ ఓల్డ్ హవెవ డిడ్ నాట్ లెడ్ అ మ్యారిటల్ లైఫ్ he left his house and set out to learn shastras from tirusainullar shri shridara ayyaval later on he became a prominent disciple of shri paramashivendra saraswati the 57th jagadguru of kanchi who named him sadashivam his fame spread so far and wide maharaja of mysore made him his court poet he won all the arguments or discussions that were held in the court many people who were defeated in the discussions pleaded with shri parmashivendra as they couldn't earn their living knowing shri sadashivam's potential is frustrated guru asked him you have learned to shut others mouth why not yours hearing this he left the place in search of his inner truth he started severe austerities maintained silence almost wandered around as avadhuta he used to remain naked or semi naked always in a state of trance and eventually turned into a brahma gyani rather brahman personified as shri sadashiva brahmendra on one occasion when he met his past associate shridhar venkatesha ayyar the latter remarked that it was appreciable to remain silent in worldly matters and questioned what prevented him from singing the praise of the almighty sadashiva brahmendra sa reason in the argument he thereafter created a series of musical compositions in praise of shri rama shri krishna and brahman his compositions were known as sadashiva brahmendra kritis his poetic signature was paramahamsa about 22 of his compositions have been recorded many of them were lost as it was not written down anywhere shri sadashiva brahmendra had mastered ashta siddhis eight yogic accomplishments he ever remained in an elated state unaware of his own body once shri brahmendra was meditating sitting on a rock aghatiya parai near kodumundi for months together this rock was in the middle of kaveri river due to floods the rock was overthrown and he was not to be seen anywhere after the water level came down people found mound and started digging it the axe it is brahmendra's head who was meditating beneath blood started oozing out from his head however he was unaware of anything people treated him and gave him food he walked off from the place as if nothing had happened once while he was walking through a field he fell down on a pile of 
he accidentally he remained there unnoticed until the pile of hay was removed after a year however after getting up from the hay stack he simply walked off as if nothing ever happened maharaja of padukottai hearing the greatness of shri sadashiva brahmendra maharaja of padukottai shri vijaya ragunath tondayaman requested shri brahmendra to visit his palace who however did not budge maharaja built a small hut near the place where shri brahmendra lived serving him in all possible ways maharaja continued to perform his duties as a king as well as a disciple from the very same place for the about 8 years one fine day shri brahmendra accepted maharaja as his disciple by writing shri dakshina murti shloka on the sand maharaja having learnt the shloka collected the sacred sand in a towel preserved it in his palace even today the sand casket blessed by shri brahmendra is found in a temple of padukottai at the behest of shri brahmendra he bought shri gopalakrishna sastrgigal to his palace from who maharaja learnt all shastras one swami ji visited tant tondri malai shri kalyana venkataramana perumal very installed consecrated ye akarshana yantram maharaja of tanjaur once swami ji was performing austerities amidst a thick jungle filled with punnayamaram maharaja of tanjaur was returning from rameshwaram along with this daughter due to heat maharaja daughter's eyes started bleeding he immediately prayed to samayapuram mari amman that once her daughter gets cured he would offer eyes made of gold to goddess mari amman the same night goddess appeared in his dreams and assured her that she was right there in the jungle maharaja sent his men in search of mari amman in the punnaya forest on their way they saw a small ant hill to which he the kids were offering milk assuming the ant hill to be mariamman maharaja then approached swami ji who was in the forest seeking his guidance in order to locate goddess mariamman swami ji said that the ant hill was none other than goddess mariamman herself on the behest of maharaja swami ji made an idol of goddess mariamman with ashtagandham eight fragrants sambrani punugu jhavadu kasturi korojhanai kumkampu pachikarapuram and sand he also installed a jana akarshana yantram in that place maharaja offered his prayers to goddess mariamman as advised by shri brahmendra and got his daughter's eyes cured people offer sambrani and tailam to goddess mariamman even today there are many more such incidents kanakamanai mallai offered by shri brahmendra to pudukottai dragadambal had his name in one of the main pearls it is even now considered as one of the main jewel in shri bagadambal temple pudukottai maharaja of pudukottai got an idol made made of shri sadashiva brahmendra and installed the same in uh, shri bragadambal temple 
separate aradhana is being carried out even today at this place he was so fond of children that once he transported a set of kids to madurai within minutes to witness the festival where the kids wanted to participate after the festival got over he transported them back to their hometown swami ji's jeeva samadhi once shri sadashiv brahmendra was walking down near a palace in a state of trance he walked straight into the harem enraged the king who wasn't acquainted about shri sadashiv brahmendra severed one of shri brahmendra's hands blood started oozing out however shri brahmendra continued to walk aware of what happened at once the king realized that shri brahmendra was a jeevan mukta i not an ordinary human he immediately pleaded with shri brahmendra seeking forgiveness it was then shri brahmendra came to his senses fixed his severed hands again back to its position without a blemish and walked off as if nothing had ever happened this incident had a deep impact on shri brahmendra he thought though he had forgiven the king he would be suffering for his act in his rebirth he was deeply moved that his body had remained a cause of someone's suffering he then decided to take a jeeva samadhi he then chose nerur as one of his samadhi stalam a place where river kaveri had its course towards south he called upon his disciples maharaja of mysore maharaja of pudukottai maharaja of tanjavur he instructed king tondaiman maharaja of pudukottai to construct a cave as given in tirumular tirumandiram he also gave a list of things to be placed before and after he was seated in the samadhi king tondaiman pleaded with shri brahmendra not to take a samadhi shri brahmendra once asked a couple of kids to cover him with mud before they left the place he remained completely covered with sand for many days shri brahmendra consoled king tondaiman by recollecting this incident insisting that he will not die or perish after the samadhi he further added that on the ninth day of his samadhi a vilvat tree vilpatra would grow in that place and on the 12th day a brahmachari from kashi would come with a shivalinga which should be placed 12 feet beneath the vilva tree temple can be constructed as per norms however the place surrounding the samadhi should be left free without any compound walls on his behest on the auspicious day of vaishak shukla dashami april may 1755 swami ji was placed in the samadhi as per his instructions as predicted by swami ji a vilva tree started to grow in the samadhi on the ninth day also a brahmachari brought a shivalinga which was consecrated 12 feet beneath the tree the maharaja of pudukottai constructed the temple to preserve this jeeva samadhi it has been more than 250 years since swami ji had taken jeeva samadhi however one could feel his very presence in the place as it is full of life even now he clarifies all his devotees doubts and cures their diseases thank you so much om namo shri raghavendra inamaha